Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is Monsignor Kevin from St. Joseph coming to you along with Cesar, our intern, who is uh, we're coming to you today from the uh, residence chapel. And it is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and uh, we miss all of you, and we're called to spiritual communion, uh, to life in Christ. So it's a joy to be with you, um, to pray with you, and let us commence this fifth week of Lent in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we begin to celebrate this uh, holy sacrament, let's call to mind uh, our sins and how great is the mercy of God. Lord, you breathed new life into the people of Israel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you breathe new life into those who are sick. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you breathe new life, eternal life, into those who have died. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and lead all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves, I have you raised from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, said the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. Lord, but with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, made iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But you, but with you is forgiveness, that you may be prepared. Lord, with, with the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and, and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dam, let Israel wait for the Lord. With, with the, the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenty of redemption, and he will redeem Israel. For all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sins, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also 
through His Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord Jesus the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after he had said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed, deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out. Tied, the dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, almost every week I give a, a short mantra from our scriptures. And so today and throughout the week, let's repeat uh, these words. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the the glory of God. This is our last Sunday of Lent before we celebrate Palm Sunday next weekend. And in our first reading, the prophet Ezekiel was weeping. The exiled Judean community had lost everything, their land, their temple, and the holy city of Jerusalem lay in ruins. Ezekiel added a vision 
that he was sitting in the middle of the valley with nothing but old dry bones scattered everywhere. It was a scene of desolation and despair. The bones represent the people scattered and without hope. And so God says to Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? Is there any hope for you and the family of Israel? Any future? And Ezekiel responds, Lord, you alone know. God says, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And at the command of the Lord, breath entered the bones. Newly formed bodies came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army of people. This was God bringing life to a people. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. We all know how during these difficult days, desolation and despair surround us. As the number of coronavirus cases increase and the death toll rises, it is very difficult. This past week, the father of one of our parishioners died in the hospital after contracting the virus. The siblings could only talk to him on the phone from a distance. The deceased husband's wife of almost six decades is now quarantined alone in her home and the children cannot even hug their mother who weeps. The family is bringing faith and comfort to one another as they share in daily Zoom conferences. Being confined is like being in a dry valley. However, the scriptures for this Sunday remind us that we are not alone. God is helping us to discover new ways of bringing life to one another, to our families, in the global community. As I said a couple of Sundays ago, fear and anxiety is not from God. Faith, trust, and hope is from God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. This Sunday, we're privileged to hear the shortest verse in all of Scripture. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. There are three reasons why Jesus wept in this, the only story about Lazarus in the Gospels. First, Jesus was moved by his own grief and love for Lazarus. And so now God is moved by our own grief and love for those who are sick and dying. Second, Jesus wept because he was accused of being uncaring. Martha states, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And third, scripture says that Jesus became perturbed and deeply troubled. There were the whispering accusations of the crowd. Jesus could have kept this man from dying, they all whispered. Jesus' spirit is troubled and agitated because after all he had done for those around him, they still didn't understand him. And so in the midst of all these difficulties, our God is caring and stories unfold every day of the contagion of generosity and caring that so many people are giving. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. During these days, many of us feel like, like we're in a tomb, a tomb of confinement, of isolation and loneliness. A long time ago, Lazarus was in the tomb shrouded in burial linens. And when he heard the voice of the master, Lazarus, come out, Lazarus, does the heavy lifting of faith in action. 
He has to lift his body up. Lazarus rallies at the voice of Jesus. And the response of Lazarus echoes all those moments when in our tombs of confinement, hear the master's voice, Jesus Christ, who is breathing new life into us. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. As we have been instructed to stay in place, and as I've said, pray in place, the challenge of being in the tomb is to become our best selves. Make the most of each day as a gift of life. To roll away the stone means that life is self-giving, not self-serving. In the tomb of stay in place, pray in place. Whether you're alone or with family, we're all discovering the grace of self-giving. Many of us are rediscovering the grace of self-giving through time spent in prayer. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. And so a couple of practical thoughts for this week. The Lord, first, the Lord is summoning your faith to reveal itself to your family and friends. You are the great witness of hope and faith. Pray the scriptures every day. Pray the rosary at home. And second, don't be immortalized by fears. Smile at your fears. That's the thought for the week. Smile at your fears. Why? Because you, all of us, trust in God. So smile at your fears. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. And in conclusion, this past Friday, from the eternal city of Rome, Pope Francis offered the Urbi et Orbi, a message to the world. And it's usually only offered at Christmas and Easter. And so it was extraordinary to receive these special words from our Holy Father during Lent. Quote, Dear brothers and sisters, from this place that tells of Peter's rock-solid faith, I would like this evening to entrust all of you to the Lord. Through the intercession of Mary, health of the people, and star of the stormy sea. From this colony that embraces Rome and the whole world, may God's blessing come down upon you as a consoling embrace. May the Lord, may, Lord, may you bless the world give health to our bodies, and comfort our hearts. You ask us not to be afraid, yet our faith is weak and we are fearful. But you, Lord, will not leave us at the mercy of the storm. Tell us again, do not be afraid. And we, together with Peter, cast all our anxieties onto you, for you care about us. I'm praying for you, for all your families, and your loved ones. Please pray for me and our seminarian, Cesar. God bless you. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. Roll away the stone and see the glory of God. We we'll now offer these prayers of the faithful, so let us offer these intentions on behalf of our church and our world. For the safety and renewed energy of the doctors, nurses, and all those in the medical field caring for the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the elderly and those home alone may be watched over by neighbors, family, and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to this pandemic and the movement of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
alone will embrace by the communion of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your church as we assemble in place, offering you praise and thanksgiving that you may renew us with hope through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My brothers and sisters, this sacrifice is prepared. Pray it will be pleasing to the Lord God Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, name for our good and the good of all the holy church. Hear us, almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify us by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For as true man, Jesus wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We will offer this holy sacrifice for you and your families. Uh, for all of the uh, first responders, those who are in the medical field caring for the sick, and for all those who are suffering in, uh, in their homes or in the hospital today, and for those who are dying. So we pray. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. Send down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, 
all of the clergy and your faithful people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, remembering especially those who have fallen victim to this coronavirus and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with apostles and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. United as a church, a faith community, together we offer the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace, the goodness of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. And so I send you a virtual uh, elbow, virtual handshake, virtual hug. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold, Jesus who raised Lazarus from the dead, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. homes um, we are joined by a great act of spiritual communion and I know the hunger you have for the Eucharist uh, but I invite you to repeat these uh, words after me in this prayer Lord Jesus, Jesus I believe that you are present I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment, since I cannot in this moment receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. Comes spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you as if you are there. As if you are there. And unite myself to you. And unite myself to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, 
that we may be always counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And Cesar would like to say a word. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to say that uh, you are in our prayers, and um, we are united uh, in heart and spirit. And uh, let us keep uh, praying each other, and uh, hopefully we, uh, we can see each other pretty soon. So God bless you. And that is our hope that we can see each other pretty soon. And uh, so know of my prayer for you, and thank you for joining us uh, this fifth Sunday of Lent. And let's go forward during this last full week of Lent, uh, drawing close to Christ and one another. So have a blessed Sunday. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of mercy and grant that what at your prompting we desire, we may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.